Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, as my throat begins to clear here at the Lenny Melnick's Fantasy Network. That's right, folks. Tomorrow, this is Cha-Cha, in case I didn't say that already. Uh, I am trying to do this for the first time on a, uh, what are we at, Spreaker? On my phone, walking around uh, the area and seeing how this thing works, because I have never done it. Other than on uh, my uh, laptop and my uh, desktop. So let's give it the old school try today, boys and girls, and see how this thing sounds. Now let me go to the chat room, see if anybody can hear me. Um, okay, good. Somebody can hear me. Fantastic. I um, just want to say thank you, Lenny, again for uh, taking us under your wing and uh, keeping us aboard here with Spreaker. Moving forward, I know we all have to do our uh, class report this week with Andrea. Uh, Everybody that's doing podcasts here will get a uh, one-on-one or one-on-two or however Andrea is going to hook us up to uh, figure out how to work this uh, speaker uh, audio player so that we can try to do it in a uh, much better fashion than we've done it in the past. Now, this is the first time I'm... uh, Oh, hey, Gene, what's happening? How you doing, Easy Kill? Carona, whoever's still here, Lou, uh, whoever's still sticking around. Uh, there's not much material here unless it comes off the top of my head. Nothing is written down. I have no notes. I didn't send you uh, a 10-page uh, listing of why I can't come on um, speak, Spreaker today because I wasn't coming on Spreaker today. Um, Lenny basically, um, it's tomorrow's Lenny's birthday, so... I just thought it was proper if I said to Lenny over his network a happy birthday, a early birthday to Lenny, the legend himself. Lenny, I don't know what you'd be doing tomorrow. More than likely, uh, I have a two o'clock or one o'clock appointment with you and Andrea at one o'clock. Again, I just wanted to put this out there. That is not necessary uh, for me to be there at one o'clock tomorrow. So if you guys uh, want to spend a day doing something wonderful with each other, uh, you just let me know right away. I don't have to be around, you know, to do whatever has to be done with Spreaker. I'll be more than happy to do it at a different hour or a different day. I didn't realize tomorrow was your birthday. So uh, just putting that out there, okay? Now, anyway, I know you guys are uh, here for sometimes. You're actually here for baseball and that good stuff. Uh, I'm going to put it out there. Jim Ross, you're in the chat room. Jim, I know you need steals. I understand you're going against Meckard this week. Now, last week, folks, in our league, one of the leagues that I play in with Meckard and Jim Ross and uh, Andrea, um, I took it. I've taken a beating in my life before, literally. But uh, Meckard, i got to give it to him. Uh, it's a 10-category league, five offense, uh, four pitching, and five, I was going to say five offense, five defense, five pitching, five offensive categories. And I didn't win one category, folks. So Easy Kill, when Easy Kill says he wants to play, you know, in a league where you only lose one to nothing, yes, maybe it'll make you feel better if you only lose one nothing. But folks, I didn't lose one nothing. I lost ten nothing. And that's uh, a, a much bigger blow to oneself as, a, uh, as I woke up this morning when Yahoo had to remind me, you had a bad week. Now... When Yahoo tells you you had a bad week, I didn't need to be told by Yahoo I had a bad week. I could see that with my own two eyes. I could see that as the week developed, that there was no way in hell that I was catching up with Meckard. Uh, you got to be on the ball with this guy. This guy hasn't lost a game in two weeks, folks. He's 20-0. and He's beaten me and another good player in the league. We haven't won one category from Meckard in two weeks. Jim Ross, I wish you the best this week. Uh... One reason, and this is one of the reasons why, not making excuses for my team, uh, it has offensively been uh, offensive, to say the least. It's been a very, very bad offensive team this year. Um, When you're adding up your categories and your opponent has 100 more more at-bats than you do, well, that's poor planning on your part, which is my part. When you even, you know... It's very hard to beat a guy in some of these categories when he has that many more at-bats than you on a given week. So 
I had to pay more attention to not having a team full of guys that are only playing five, maybe six games that week. So he had a nice, strong lineup every single day. He seemed to have uh, his offensive players playing every day, giving me at-bats that helped him to beat me in all five categories. You know, so uh, those are things that I, I have some control of. I do have control over that. I don't have control over all the injured players that that are not playing, but I or how they or my players that are playing. But I do have control of bit making better moves on my part to uh, to beat them, you know. And same thing with the pitching categories. I mean, there are there are times when I mean he Meckert picked up everything he picked up this week was gold. If he picked the guy off a waiver wire for a pitcher, or he streamed the pitcher, that pitcher pitched very well for him or won the game for him. Gave him the strikeouts. You know, he only beat me in like by three, maybe three strikeouts for the week. And on saves, um, he did everything he had to do. Everything was golden this week. Every single pitcher he picked up, Trevor Richards, um, the kid from... Uh, Detroit, he picked up that Lenny just talked about, and I can't think of who it was. He pitched a real good game for him. Uh, he picked up Tanner Rourke, and Tanner Rourke gave him a good game. So even the guys that he picked up, and offensively too, he just had a fantastic week. So you got to give all the credit to him as he managed. Again, people talk about roto leagues against head to head leagues. There was a lot of strategy going into this match with me and him. And I was trying my best every day to try to try to win a category, thinking how am I going to, you know, make a move here. And um, again, I know you guys love Roto, and I just don't see it. The more and more I play in my head-to-head league, and even I'll tell you, I want, this week I am in four Roto leagues. Every single Roto league, I'm in a Roto league with some most of you guys too in this AL only auction league, which I'm doing okay in. Um, bouncing around from first to third, I think, in that league. But I don't, you know, as, as far as I looked on the chart and I seen my team was in first place, I think, for this week. But I don't get the juice, folks. I don't get the juice. There's no juice there. You know, there's no juice in that Roto League for me. Me actually losing, I got more out of losing 10 nothing. I got more satisfaction in a given week getting my ass kicked. That's all I'm thinking about. That's the only league I can honestly say every single day I had to worry about how to improve my team to try to beat my opponent. In the Roto League, it just, you know, somebody drops a guy in the AL, in the AL only league. We all maybe fight for him if somebody happens to throw some scraps off to the wire. But there's really, you see that AL only league we play in. You guys think that's... I don't understand how you guys think. This is my first time playing in it. Like, I know Lenny says, you know, it's, it's compa- um, what was the word he used? I remember when I said, you know, how can you play with two catchers in an AL only league? He goes, well, that's the, uh, the strategy. What strategy? To have two catchers that suck all year? My two catchers that suck are better than your two catchers that suck? I don't get it, man. I don't get it. You guys tell me that AL only league that we're playing in right now is a lot of fun. Where's the fun? I have 70 something points. Who the frig right now in last place or, or is close to is got 40 points? You guys are gonna pick up even it's only May, but it's a friggin' hill to climb if you're gonna catch me in that league. There's like four teams, maybe five teams in that league that have a shot. I don't Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I have to see it. Go, I have to play it out. I just don't see it. How do you keep guys that are 40 points behind you in, involved in this league? At this point, it's only May. I mean, seriously. Anybody that's in this chat room, there's Doug and there's my, myself and Lou and uh, duh, the, the kids from... Uh, Drought, that do the drought show. I mean, really. I mean, Lou just made a trade, a crazy trade with Drought for Upside. 
I mean, it's one of them crazy trades that you, the people, you know, nobody really gives a shit. So the trade's going to go through. But he's getting Aaron Hicks for like a bag of balls. You know, nobody's, you know, complaining about it. But Ralph Rufside dropped like two pitches for him and, and, and traded a player for him. It's, you know, it, to me, it's like, and, and the two pitches that Ralph Rupside is dropping, like Mike Fears and some other bum, you know. But those guys are actually worth something in this AL only league. So when he drops those two pitches and they become free, we'll probably all be scrambling to pick these two bums up. But I don't know. I don't. I just again. I don't know what you guys think about playing in AL only, NL only leagues, and find it to be so competitive and such a. I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope you guys continue to to to, to play it out for the whole season. But I'm finding it hard. Again, like I said, I I've I surprisingly took a the beating on my life against Meckard. And I'm more concerned, and I guess, I, and just it was more, even though I lost, I, I'm more, I'm going to say, excited to be in that kind of a contest with somebody, a com- competitive contest during the week, trying my hardest, trying every single move that he or me makes. It's like a chess match going back and forth. You know, I don't see it. You know, I don't see it in, in these in these roto leagues. It's almost like you, if you... I know I drafted a pretty good team, and and some of the guys got better teams than me. I think on paper, maybe just you know maybe an AL. I don't know. Like I said, I never played. It's an AL auction league too, where I really didn't make. I tell you, I should have. I should have. I guess I got lucky by not spending all my money on pitchers. I think I did better off because most of the pitchers haven't. The good pitchers haven't been so good. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Mecca was, the, in that game, I was the guy playing checkers, and he was playing chess because he beat the, pul- the pulp out of me. Now, I know Easy Kill's jumping up and down. He played Andrea last week in my league. But see, look at this. Easy Kill beat Andrea. I think it was 5-4, to four, if I'm correct. There might have been a tie in there. I'm not 100% sure. And, uh... Yeah, Lenny says one injury and you're back in the race. Well, I don't know about that, Lenny. <laughs> I don't know about an AL only one injury and you're back in the race. I don't. I don't know if you guys, if you've seen the teams that that that, that are playing in that AL only league. Maybe you're right. You've been playing in this a lot longer than me. But I don't uh, listen, Andrea. Going back to the Andrea and Easy Kill. Now Andrea says she didn't change the lineup last week. Well, I got a terrible. You know, news for you. That ain't my fault. That's your fault. If you didn't play your lineup, this is another thing people do. They're playing, Andrea, I'll tell you right off the bat, she's in too many leagues. Absolutely in too many leagues. Involved in too many leagues. I've done it, I've done that circuit many years ago when I was trying to be in serious XM's leagues and I was in all their leagues and I was helping all other people with their leagues. In the meantime... I was falling back on my own leagues. And that's what was happening. I don't pay attention to all the leagues that I, that I play in. So I let this league go, and this league I don't get a guy, and then this league I get outbeat and fair because I didn't pay attention. These are all things that are going to happen to people that just play too many leagues. And you don't need to. You overwhelm yourself. you got to have time to do your fab. You gotta have time to look on the waiver wire. There's too many injuries in baseball for you not to pay attention, honestly, daily. I don't think there's a day that goes by. I mean, we have our program here as evidence of it. Every day there's plenty of news and stuff to talk about. Most of the time, when Lenny comes on at 9 o'clock, 9 times out of 10, he's gonna tell you about somebody that got hurt. Or somebody that's out. That's just the way it is. It is. But if you don't pay attention to your own team. And you're playing in leagues that are. Let's face it. To me every league is important. I'm not saying my AL only league 
And auction league is not important. It is important. I'm on it every day. I'm checking my shit. I'm watching what you guys are doing. What I'm trying to say when it comes to having fun is my head-to-head league burns the shit out of any of these roto leagues by a ton, by a mile. And when I start playing again next year, these roto leagues, more than likely, I'll be flip-flopping. It'll be head-to-head, and I'll throw a couple of rotos in. Because that's where the competition's at, man. To me, that's where it's at. You know, stick sitting around. I know I got June in that TGFBI league. There's nine people representing Lenny Melnick in that TGIFBI league. I guarantee you right now, seven out of the nine teams are still playing strong. Maybe. I guarantee you there's at least two teams from this group that aren't checking their TGFBI teams like they should. Guaranteed. But they were allowed in that thing because we have the head of Lenny, you know, Lenny Melnick's Fantasy Sports Network. We're representing him. But if you're not representing Lenny in that league by giving it your all, then you don't deserve to be asked to come back next year. Matter of fact, you probably didn't deserve to be asked this year. But... As the powers that be, I don't want to see our name on the bottom of the list. I want to see our name on the top of the list. I don't want to see teams that people from this site that didn't participate and were asked to play in it, not participating, just staying on this network. You should be playing hard. You should be trying, making moves. There's plenty of guys out there. And there is. And the TGI, FBI, bullshit league, whatever. I know it's free and everything. But there are guys on the waiver wire. You can pick up a guy in that league. I know it's a 15-team league. But if you go through that waiver wire and you check the schedules for the following week, who's playing in two pitches and stuff, I found a ton of guys this week by looking. And again, they, they're not world beaters. I'm not gonna. I pick. You could pick up CC Sabathia, two start week. You could pick, guy like him. He's sitting out there. Guy like him, Spencer Turnbull. He's out there. Everybody's going for Nick Senzo, and 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 and, and Grant Canning, and they're going for Nick Lowe. Everybody's going to spend all their money on all these guys. But there's other guys that Dexter Fowler. He's out there. These guys can help you for a given week. Steve Duga, Duga, whatever the freak his name is. They're out there. The kid from Colorado. The, the, uh, the kid that's playing the outfield. The Spanish, new Spanish guy. He's out, he's out there. There are players to pick up to help you. So there's no excuse that, oh, man, I lost. You know, I lost. Hey, listen. I lost Judge. I lost Stanton. I lost Pollock. I lost Paxton. All these dudes are gone, man. For a long period of time, they're going to be gone. But, got to pick up some people. Tapia, that's his name. In a given week, a guy like Tapia can give you as much as a, as a Stanton or better. It's only one week. You, you, it's just like with your pitches. You don't have to keep... I mean, I got Sergio Romo as one of my closers. I don't use him every week. If I have better two-star pitches or, or one start that I think is a real good start, I'll probably start him. You know, I even got... You know, th- so there's moves to be made over a course of a season. It's not like you... I really thought with the TG by FBI League, if everybody's familiar with that nonsense, that there would be less people out there. I mean, I got I spent a ton of money this week. I got Canning and Nick Lowe. The two guys everybody wanted except for Senzo on the waiver wire. It cost me $400. $200 for each player. But I spent the money, and I got the two best players that were out there. I did it. That's it. I went and did it. 
I spent the money because there's no tomorrow. I'm not going to get another possible pitcher that's as good as this kid from the Angels. Maybe there will be a couple guys that come up. Maybe. How many good hitters are going to come up for the rest of the season? Five? When are they going to come up? Nick Lowe's here already. He's going to play every day. I need a hitter. Stanton's hurt. Judge's hurt. Pollock's hurt. What am I going to do? Spend a couple of hundred dollars. Get myself a player. And I don't worry about later. Worry about this week. I got to win this week. I got to get... It's, I know it's a roto league. Like Andrea. Andrea's in 151st place in this league. Now she's halfway through the crowd. There's 316 teams. But you could go up quick in this league. You have a good week. Boom. Knock yourself up in the top 100. But you can't look at your team every week and continue to play the same guys that are killing you. If your team is hurting, there are guys out there that sometimes you have to take out of your lineup. I know it's a roto league, but you can't keep putting dirt bag pitches in and expect your ERA and whip to go down to get a couple of damn wins. Sometimes you just can't use those guys. You got to use better ratio pitchers, even if it takes you to take the Robin Stevensons of the world for a week from the Reds or, a, or you know, guys like... Like that. John Gantz of the world. You know? Yeah, no. I went down. Andrew, I was, a, I was the best I think I was was about 140, 150 one week. You look at my team. I'm 182nd. My, when you lose Stanton and you lose uh, Judge, come on. You can't gain the power. You're not going to, you know, my offense is horrible in that league. The only thing I can do is hope to maintain not to be the fool of my division. I do not want to finish in last place. You know, it's terrible. You know, and then, you know, I lose my best pitcher on top of it. What am I supposed to do? I do. I try the best I can and hope that I don't finish in last place. <laughs> That's it. That's a disgrace. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I know I, st- I should stop drafting the Yankees. And this league, I had some moments because this is one of the few leagues that I was able to draft Judge and Stanton back to back, and I was real happy about it. Well, <laughs> so much for being happy. <laughs> I don't know how many Red Sox I got in my team. Probably not enough. I probably should have took Betts and uh, Martinez. I'd be a lot better off right now. But like Lou says, yes, you're right. You can't win every league. And out of the five leagues, I don't expect to win every league that I'm in, in, in on Yahoo. And, and this actually, a sixth league makes the TGFBI league. But the whole point is to be competitive and at least give it 100%. Give it a shot. You know, go after guys. And especially in this head-to-head league. This head-to-head league already, we have... Easy Kill and, and Andrea and Meckard are added to this league. The league is loaded. You don't get a break. There's no break in this. Like every single week, the guys and the girls that we're playing against, nobody's letting up. The foot's on the gas here, folks. The foot is on the gas. There ain't no let up. You let up, they'll step right over you, right on top of you. <laughs> they'll step right over you. And that's what's happening right now. Nobody's... Feeling sorry for me because I got my brains kicked in last week. They're just going to keep stepping on me as long as they can. And nobody's going to say, oh, too bad you don't have this guy. Too bad you don't have that guy. It's too bad for you. Go on a waiver wire. Make a, make a trade and uh, fix your team. And you better fix it quick because uh, it's going to get late early in this league. Real, real, <laughs> real <laughs> uh, early in this league because... I think I am 12 games under 500 in this league. So that would definitely put me way behind my normal. Uh, usually I'm at least 500 by now. But getting back to the, uh, the Spreaker here, I guess it's working pretty damn good today. So I'm very satisfied. I hope the uh, sound quality and the whole shebang here 
is working like it's supposed to be working. And we'll find out after uh, if I do this, if it goes up automatically and all that good stuff. I think most, for the most part, I think we've all had a pretty good experience with Spreaker. I know there's been a couple of uh, shows that had a couple of problems with it. But, uh, oh, look, it went up already. Wow. I'm looking at, actually, it went up on, um, right now, I just went on the, um, on my laptop, and it actually shows already that, yeah, I'm live. It's actually posted already that I'm live while I'm doing this, so that's pretty damn good. Yeah, no, that's good. Hey, Arnie, what's happening, buddy? Who's on today? Let me check out the, uh. We got a lot of people coming on today. Hopefully, we have a full... Usually, Monday's a nice full schedule here. I don't know if about your Game of Thrones people. I don't know if you guys... Ha- was it a good night for the Game of Thrones people? Was it good? Was it good for you people? <laughs> I don't know. I don't watch Game of Thrones. So, I don't, I don't know n- enough about it to give any... You know, I, God forbid I give somebody the wrong information about the Game of Thrones. I'll freaking throw me out the window. Okay, today is, uh, by the way, today is, um, it's not Cinco de Mayo no more. I don't know if anybody celebrated that. I did. I actually celebrated Cinco de Mayo on, um, on Saturday. I'm one of those people that likes to go the day before it's too crowded and got my, uh, I got my tacos and my beers and everything on Saturday. I had a good time at one of these Mexican restaurants in, um, where the hell was it? I was in Bronxville. See, we have, uh, I live not too close. I live next to these where people have a lot of money. I live next to it, you know. I don't live in it, but I can drive. It's funny. Like, I'm like 15 minutes from where all the rich people are, you know. So I go to where the rich people are when it comes to these uh, nice little restaurants. And then they chase me out of there. They take my money. I spend my money with them. And then uh, I move on. Okay. Well, today, let me give you guys the schedule. Obviously, Lenny was on this morning with his daily podcast at 9 o'clock. He'll be back tomorrow on his birthday, folks. He will be here tomorrow at 9 o'clock on his birthday. Jesus Christ, the guy don't get off his birthday. Uh, that's followed by uh, this guy named Lou Landers and some other moron named Cha-Cha. That's the Fantasy Gangster Show. That's tomorrow at 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock shows. Today, DFS Hangover is going to be on at 11 a.m. Uh, we'll have, uh, let's see, is, uh, I don't know. I don't, think, uh, I don't see Cam on the uh, horizon here. Cam Grande. I don't see him on the schedule. Maybe I'm wrong. Am I wrong? I don't know. Well, it looks like he's not here today. So I'm going to say Cam is not on the schedule. So, so much for Cam, unfortunately, today. But Cam will be back tomorrow at Trophy Town Tuesday with uh, Cam Giagrande. Uh, Cam, and I think in his son last night, did the uh, Game of Thrones recap. That comes on uh, every, uh, what is it, Sunday at 10 o'clock? Pretty cool. And guess Rosaria. How do you say that name? Whatever Somebody's in a chat room as a guest. You who what? Let me say you who. Whatever that means. I don't know what you who means. You who usually means it's like to me. I would say you. Let me say you who. I don't know what that means. Spell it out. Anyway, let me give you the rest of the schedule for today. One o'clock, we got pitches, get stitches with Joe Julio or Gulo. Gulo, I like to say Gulo. JJ Sports Talk will not be here today, but it'll be here tomorrow at 2 o'clock for the rest of the week. He's here from Tuesday to Friday. Okay, Andrea's saying, you who, screaming it into the chat room. And, of course, he doesn't realize I am looking at the chat room. So I am looking at the chat room, and when I see you who, and I'm talking, that would kind of make me think he's talking to me. I don't know. I'm half a moron, but figure that out. 3 o'clock today, drop the mic with Michael Ecclestein will be on. Okay. Sam Venosa is just logged in. Fantastic. Jean says she has no sound. I don't know why that is. Jean, you got to go back, refresh. I don't know why you're having problems. Let me see why is Jean having problems. I am, it says I'm live. Uh, if, you, if you could see, Jean, where it says legend with the microphone, there's a yellow little uh, tag there and it says live. Then it says this guy, then it says my name, Cha Cha. And it has all the bars going back, going across. That's what you should be seeing on your screen. So if you're not seeing that, you might be seeing the last show. Sometimes if the person that's on now, 
If you don't have it refreshed, it's gonna show either the, it's gonna show the last show, which should be Lenny's show popping up, which isn't always a bad thing to listen to Lenny again instead of listening to my gibberish. Okay. Okay, we're good now. Okay, now we're good. Anyway, where's my uh, my mouse? Sometimes you need a mouse. I'm gonna go over uh, since we got a little bit of time here, but I have much time because my. Um, I got 4% left on my uh, on my iPhone. So you know what that means, folks. We're in trouble. Now over in uh, the waiver wire pickups last night, let's just go over our AO, our AL auction league, which we're all about us here. This is us. This is me. This is Lenny. This is Aloha Fantasy. This is Fluffy Bunnies. That's Doug, we got Lou Landis, we got Beach Bum, we got Arnie. Let's see how that league is doing, okay? Let's see what's going on here. 4%, yeah, I only got 4%, that's all I got. Oh, boy, let's check out. <clears throat> this is what happened yesterday in that AL only auction league. Look, look at some of these beauties that were picked up and, get, and got rid of. Mr. Lou Landis had the nerve, the audacity this morning. He went in, I don't know why, because it's 7.59 here, so it's like 4 o'clock in the morning in uh, California. He dropped Cam Bedrosian. So if anybody out there wants Cam Bedrosian, he is ready and ripe. You can have him. (laughs) I picked up, this is a big pickup, folks. This is how bad that AL Auction League is. I picked up Nicky Del Monaco. Uh, He has a decent... Uh, schedule this week, and he qualifies at first base in the outfield. And uh, I'm hoping for Nicky Delmonico and his 215 batting average to give me some home runs this week. I dropped Manny Benuelos in his, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, so Manny Benuelos, I'm sure by the end of this week, will be picked up by one of you stiffs. I also picked up Lourdes Guriel Jr., who I dropped earlier in the year since he got dropped off into the minor leagues. I'm hoping Mr. Guriel Jr. comes up in the near future. And I dropped Felix Pena. Also, I'm sure one of you guys was going to be picking up Mr. Pena. Lenny Melnick, the the legend himself, must know something we don't because he picked up Jarrell. How do you say that? Jarrell Cotton. Remember old Cotton picking Jarrell Cotton? Oakland pitcher, he had a couple of good outings. I don't know, was that back in 2017? Well, Lenny decided to drop the great Ivan Nova to pick up Jarrell Cotton. Good luck there, Mr. Melnick. He also dropped Carlos Rodon. Unfortunately, Mr. Rodon is back on the DL. Yeah, Mr. Cotton. Andrea, Lenny picked up the cotton. I got 2% left, folks, so we ain't got much time. Lenny also picked up... uh, Joaquin Soraya and drop Carlos Rodon. <laughs> yep, it's it's desperation time, folks. It's it's hard times at Ridgemont High over here. Let's see who else was picked up this week or last night. Mr. Doug. Mr. Doug. That's right. Dougie Boyle of Fluffy Bunnies. He picked up Stevie Wilkerson. He plays second base in outfield in case you guys don't know about him. Over in uh, Baltimore, he dropped Mr. Luis Ringifo. Ringifo did not give him much, and he said, for a dollar, I'll go with Stevie Wilkerson. Can't blame him there. Aloha Fantasy, Kevin Hastings said, hey, Trent Thornton picked a couple of good games. Why not spend $21 and pick him up? So Mr. Thornton is now owned by Mr. Aloha. As he drops Jorge Mateo, who hasn't played yet in the major leagues. Lenny's giving you information on Mr. Cotton in the chat room in case you guys need to know who Mr. Cotton is. Cotton picking time. I don't know if he's going to be pitching anytime soon, folks. But good luck on that. Hanser Alberto was also picked up from another Baltimore uh, Oriole by Mr. Landers. And he dropped... King Felix, no respect for King Felix, as he's on the waiver wires, ready to be plucked up by one of us schmucks. Mr. Fluffy Bunnies himself picked up Lenny's all-time favorite, Cameron Maben, 
and he dropped the best name that you'll ever hear on a baseball player besides Babe Ruth, Sky Bolt. <laughs> Andrea bitching about Yahoo on the ch- in the chat room. I wish I could help you, Andrea, but right now I'm so busy with this waiver wire disaster waiver wire list here. It's really a sad, sad day here in Yahoo land. I don't think I could stay logged in unless I'm in a, near a plug, Jim. Right now, I'm, a, I'm not near a plug. Unless the plug goes into my rectum, I don't think that's the only electricity we have in this area. Now, my 18-team league, I like to go into that because you get some deep, deep picks. Where the frig? I don't know if I could do this. Well, Carlos Martinez was picked up, and Tyler Wade was thrown off to the waiver wire. Josh Smith... Red Sox uh, pitcher was also picked up. Brian Adams. No, not Brian Adams, the singer. Brian Reynolds was picked up. And Stevie Wilkerson was dropped off. Malik Smith. Picked up by old man. The man's name is old man with a cane. You guys would like this league. Malik Smith was picked up. I don't know why, but he was. Adam Engel, unfortunately, no relation to the king himself, was dropped off to the waiver wire. Sam Gavilio, Sam Gavilio was picked up, and Sandy Alcantara was dropped. Juan Lagares was picked up. Nobody was dropped off. Kendris Morales has been seen and is going to be playing for a team called Jester's Dead. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kendris Morales is half the man he used to be. Chris Owings has made himself back to the waiver wire. 2% and counting, folks. Yes, Lou Landis says Malik should be owned in an 18-team league. Mr. Landis, I agree with you. He was on the wire. So you can have him if you'd like. If you'd like to join this league next year, we'll give you a... Uh, uh, we'll give you a... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, I'll send you a link. Drew Smiley picked up. The great Drew Smiley of the Texas Rangers was also picked up with Jeffrey Rodriguez. These pitchers won't put any uh, fear into you, but they were picked up off the waiver wire in an 18-team league. Now let's get over to what's really happening here. The 10-team league that I play in. Now this should be some juicy pickups. Let's see who we got here, folks. Yes, sorry, Bobby. Luke Jackson was picked up. Luke. Got his big save, and the dude drops Han Seal Robles for him. That's Han Seal Robles was dropped. That's right, folks. He's on the wire. Lou Trevino picked up. Believe it or not, folks, Jose Peraza was dropped for Lou Trevino. That's right, folks. Jose Peraza, who had a fantastic year last year, is now on the wire, waiver wires and a 10 team league. That's not just smart. But if you're in a 10-team league, Andrea, you can do these things. It's so much fun, isn't it? (laughs) Kyle Schwaber! That's right, folks. The great Kyle Schwaber. I picked him up. Why? Because I was a little short on power, and I want my average to go down. And I had to drop somebody, so I dropped the great Matt Adams for him. Goodbye to Matt Adams. It was good for you to have you for a week. 1% counting, folks. This is going to go off on its own, I predict. Yeah, good idea. Chris Bassett was picked up by the Fantasy Mailman, and he dropped Danny Santana. And he also picked up Danny Santana the day before and dropped Danny Santana for Chris Bassett. The Fantasy Mailman doesn't know what he's doing, so he'll just continue to pick up guys and drop guys the same day. You can do that shit in a 10-team league with a bunch of morons. Griffin Canning, folks! I picked him up for 11 bucks and dropped Brad Peacock, who has not been... Half the pitcher he used to be last year. He sucks. At least he does this year. Jesus Aguilar also dropped. That's right, folks, for Brandon Woodruff. That's right. He's gone. He's out. Last but not least, I got to go. 1%. Jake Odorizzi picked up. And Lenny's all-time favorite, Ronaldo Lopez, who Lenny will tell you to pick Ronaldo Lopez up, has been dropped on the waiver wire in a 10-team lead. Folks, This is Cha-Cha at Lenny Melnick's Fantasy Network saying so long, goodbye, till next time. That's right, he was dropped, mother. The 10-team league, get over it, DK.
God. Yes. 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 That's right, mother. Cheer for me, you bitches. Good night.